Blessings to you, church family, friends, and loved ones. How are you today? This is Wilma King, Strategic Intercessory Prayer Director at Antelope Christian Center, and I want to welcome you today. I want to thank you today for tuning in again today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a miracle day. This is a miracle day. Each day, as far as I'm concerned, is a miracle day. And I just want to thank you again, and I just want to open up in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you right now for your presence. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, you're not missed. So, Lord, we know that there's others gathering, and we just thank you for your presence, Lord God. We thank you, and we call on Holy Spirit. As never before, you know what we need, Lord. Hallelujah. Speak to hearts today. Touch bodies today, Lord. Heal and restore today, Lord God. Give hope today, Lord. Give encouragement today, Lord. We need encouragement, Lord God. Give encouragement today. Your kingdom come and your will be done today, Lord. We pray. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before I get started into what the scripture that the Lord has put on my heart for this week, I just want to give condolences to my family back in Los Angeles, California. Nancy Ichinaga was my principal many years ago, many years ago in the early 70s. She hired me and I worked for her for many years. She was um, such a sweet woman, a little short Japanese woman that, that just was all over the place. I don't know, she was all over the place. And she just passed away on this past Monday. But I wanna say to the family is that she was such a dynamite, mighty woman. She was so precious and she spoke so much truth into my life. Wherever God has us located, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, he has a plan and a purpose. He used Nancy to help me to open up my eyes and to be delivered and set free. She was one of the people, my principal, that set me down one day and said, Wilma King, Wilma Lawson at the time, she said, okay, I can tell you don't care about yourself, but what about those precious children you have? It's time for you to start considering them. And when I, when she said those words, I can't explain it any other way, but it was like a light bulb came on the inside. I was born again. I had been walking with the Lord back, had restored my relationship back with the Lord. And it was like he used her for such a time that was. And so I listened to those words. And shortly after that, my deliverance came. God used her in so many ways for me and my family. And I just want to say to her family now, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. And may you have the peace of God and the strength of God to know that your mother was a special, special person. And I also had the opportunity last year to visit her while she was kind of um, going through her illness. I had a chance and opportunity and it was so precious because I also had a quiet time with her that I was able to minister to her. And I know right now where her spirit is at. I know right now that she's with Jesus. I know right now that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I know right now that when I spoke the prayer and she spoke the prayer back to me, I know right now where my friend and my principal, Nancy Ichinaga, is at. So I just want to thank you, Lord, right now for being a comfort to her family and, and all the loved ones. Just comfort them, Lord God, with your peace and strength for such a time as this in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I want to share today a word of encouragement from Matthew 18, excuse me, Matthew 11. No, that's right, Matthew 18. I don't have my glasses on. I should have had them over here, but that's okay. I'm going to share this scripture from Matthew 18, chapter, excuse me, 11, verse 28. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is saying to the church, Jesus is saying, Take my yoke. Take my yoke. Jesus' yoke is that relationship that we have with him. Jesus' yoke 
is the word of God that he's given us. Jesus yoke is his presence which can cons which consumes us it's around us it's in us that's what the lord jesus wants us to take he wants us to have his peace and his rest he wants us to become dependent upon him now if we come to him and take his yoke then we're not going to have the frustration the worries the anxieties, the pressures of this life overwhelming us. And that's exactly what the adversary is doing. He's trying to overwhelm God's people with the things that we are seeing. And I'm not saying that they're not real, but we can't not let them be greater than God's word because the greater one is in us and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. What I'm saying is as I take on the yoke of Jesus, as I spend that time with him, as I'm developing my relationship with him, he said the burden would be light. I want to encourage us today. I want us to be encouraged today to not try to figure everything out, but give it to the Lord. When situations and circumstances arise, take it to the Lord, take it to him. He said, come, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, but first I have to come and I have to receive what he has for me. It's all in his word. It's all there for us. It's all in prayer. It's all in praising him as I enter into his praises. What happens to me is when I enter into his praises, all the circumstances and situations, they seem to go like this. They're moving outward instead of invading inward. Now I'm entering into the presence of the Lord. And when I enter into his presence, he said he inhabits the praises of his people. Now I'm in his presence and now I'm focused on him and those concerns and those worries and those problems and those cares. He says, take no thought for tomorrow what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, what you're going to do. But as I take the situation and my day one day at a time, he said, my burden would be easy. So I'm encouraging you today, saints, to take on the Lord Jesus Christ. Take on his peace and rest. That's the only thing that's going to last. It's in Christ. Everything else is temporal. When I take on anything outside of his word, outside of who he is in my life, it's going to, those other things are going to fade away. But as I take on him, and even in my memories of my friend that I just shared the testimony about, when I take on all the things that the Lord has done for me, oh, my soul just cries out and shout, hallelujah. I thank the Lord, I thank the Lord for saving me. So I want to say to you today, don't get frustrated. Don't be weary. Know that God is in control. When you feel the spirit, when you feel that one of worry, I got many texts today already this morning, and they were all about worry. <laughs> and what my answer was when I text back, turn that worry into prayer. Turn that worry into prayer. Turn that, just start petitioning God, Lord, this is what's on my heart and I'm giving it to you. I'm giving to you my child. I'm giving to you my situation. I'm giving to you health challenges. Whatever it is, give it to the Lord. That's why he said, take our burdens to him and then leave them there. Let those burdens become your prayer. Let that prayer become into a praise. Start believing and thanking God. That's where the answers are. That's where the healing power is. We have a prayer wall here at church. We have prayer going on here, even in the midst of what the storms are like. People are sending in their prayer requests. I have a request from a friend in Georgia. Her husband, hallelujah, Namasata, has been in the hospital over a month with this pandemic, with the coronavirus. I haven't had a chance to read the full text, but I just glanced at it on my way coming to church. Her husband is going to be released on June 25th. Her request came to this church. It came to the prayer wall and the intercessors are praying for him. He's coming out of there. Hallelujah. He's coming out of there. He's been there going on two months, but he's coming home. That's the power of prayer. Miracles are happening every day. 
Are you expecting? Are you looking for them? Can you, first of all, can you believe God for them? He's working miracles every day. Can you believe God to work a miracle in your life, in your family life? Can you believe God? He's greater. He's more powerful. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You know what? He doesn't change, but we do. I won't go there, but we change. We need to be faithful. We need to be persistent. We need to be committed. When I heard Pastor Bill's devotion, we have to be committed, persistent in prayer. When we don't see it working, that don't mean God isn't moving. It's not about what I see. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are you listening to the word of God? Are you being obedient to the word of God? Are you praying without ceasing? That's what I'm talking about. And if I'm getting loud, I'm sorry about that. Because sometimes I don't think the devil can hear. And I, so I need my husband to say, why do you pray so loud? That's my business and Jesus. Okay? Okay. Because everybody got their way. But all I'm saying is, stay with the word. Stay prayerful. Stay committed to God. Turn those worries. Turn those concerns. Turn them into prayers. Turn them into positions. And then believe God. You have to believe you know what he's doing today, saints? He wants us to trust him. He wants us to trust him with all his heart. He wants us to lean not to our understanding, but to trust his promises for today as never before. As never before. We need to trust God today. And today I'm going to close with a word of prayer. Oh God, I still got notes here, Lord. But I'm going to close here. But I just want you to know that our God is greater than any circumstance, than any situation that you can encounter. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent, all knowing. All he's saying is, come, take on my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So today, Father, today, Father, today, Lord, we want to take on more of you. We want to take on more of you, Lord, in our lives. We want, Lord God, we want to rest in you. We want to trust in your promises, Lord God. We want to cast all our cares on you because you care for us. You're concerned about everything that concerned our life. You're all knowing, all seeing, all powerful. You care and you love us so much. I wanna thank you today, Lord, for moving by your spirit. Today, someone is listening right now. You need a touch in your body and I'm going to ask and agree with you right now. Father, touch, 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 heal and restore. What the men, en enemy means for evil, work it out for good. We're asking for your healing power to touch, Lord. Touch those that are out there that need to be touched, Lord. Give them hope. Give them trust. Let them know that all things are possible. Let them know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You change not, and you are the God that healeth thee. You sent your word, and you healed all our diseases. You are the God that healeth thee. So we thank you today, Lord. We're trusting you today, Lord God. We're trusting in every area, financially, physically, mentally, emotionally. We're trusting in your word, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in our lives. Be glorified in all we do, Lord. For such a time as this, let the church rise up. Take off the mask and walk in the Spirit of God. Walk in, we are his voice for today. Walk in with life to those who are around us. Speak hope. Speak love, speak kindness in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 hallelujah.